Look, Nigel, uh, I hate to do this to you, given you're in the States, but I do want to bring you back to politics uh, back here in the UK, if that's OK with you, because mm. we have had uh, the big breaking news over the last hour that Gavin Williamson has resigned from Rishi Sunak's cabinet. Now, this has obviously been the third time he's been forced out of cabinet. Uh, first, it was under Theresa May, then Boris Johnson. Uh, do you think his resignation calls into questions uh, Rishi Sunak's political judgment, or is this just an example of another uh, mainstream media witch hunt? No, it's an example of the low calibre of people in today's Conservative Party, including those in Cabinet. How a creep like that ever even reached Cabinet position? <laughs> How he was ever reappointed? No, I mean it. Have a look at him. Have a look at his speeches. I mean, the, guy, the guy's a social misfit. I'm sorry, but so many of them are like that. He lost that defence job because it was said that he'd leaked confidential military papers. He is low grade. In the real world, he would have gone precisely nowhere. But sadly, sadly, that is what today's careerist Conservative Party is. It's stuffed full of people like that, with the odd honourable exception. No, and look, I do agree with you on Gavin Williamson. He was a very incompetent uh, education secretary. But I think, Nigel, what is... Uh maybe annoying me a little bit, uh, the pearl clutching from certain parts of politics and certain part of the media about uh, what I would describe as the cut and thrust of Westminster. And you know they exchange yeah. messages like that between each other all the time, right? Yeah, look, I get that point, uh, you know. And of course, if you talk even vigorously to a civil servant, they'll accuse you of bullying. I understand that. But you know what? You know what? If the phrases attributed to Williamson are correct, it just Which shows a guy who, frank who frankly lacks judgment, who lacks judgment at every level. Uh, how on earth he's got a knighthood is completely and utterly beyond me, rather like the resignation honours list where people aged 19 are going to the House of Lords, sorry, 29, um, are going to the House of Lords. I mean, it sums the whole thing up. These are the last days of Conservative rule. They don't deserve to be there. They've let the electorate down horribly. And the issue, as I predicted, two years cost them the election is what is happening in the English Channel, even if the economy improves. And frankly, Dan, when you promise people, vote for us, we will honour the Brexit result and bring back control of Britain's borders, and you haven't even got the guts to send back Albanian criminals, you don't deserve to win the election. Well, indeed. And, Nigel, then you see Maloney in Italy prove that actually if someone has the political will, there are things that can be done. But Sunak lacks yes, the guts to do it, right? We lack the guts to do it. And, of course, because we're part of ECHR, we give our judges every opportunity to stop deportations happening of any kind at all. And it's, it's extraordinary. You know, go back 10 years, and we were deporting 30 or, th 30 or 40,000 people a year who were in the country illegally or who committed crimes. We're now deporting virtually nobody. That's where we've gone. 12 years of conservative government. They are now a social democrat government. They are left of center. They are big state. They are high tax. They are open border legal immigration. 1.2 million visas issued last year. They can't control the channel. They are not a Conservative Party. Stop deluding yourself, Dan, that they are. They're not. And frankly, the choice between them and Labour, it's almost back to where we were 10 years ago. You know, when we had Cameron, Clegg and Miliband ruling the roost, I used to say you can't put a cigarette paper between them. Then we had Boris and Brexit, and we had Corbyn with a hard left agenda. And at least we had a choice, a political choice, and the country made its choice in 2019, and the silent majority, the common sense majority, spoke and spoke very clearly, giving a big majority. Now, I don't know what the choice is. I really mean that. No, and I fear you're right about Rishi Sunak, and you know I never wanted to hit the guy anywhere near number 10, and he was installed in what I believe uh, was an anti-democratic coup, which is actually costing uh, the Conservatives thousands and thousands of members. And you may be interested to know, uh, Nigel, uh, we have Richard Tice, the leader of the Reform Party, on later to talk about all of the new, well, all of the I, new members rushing towards good, and, and, and Dan, you know, I am the honorary president of Reform. Reform I know you are, yes. <laughs> 
Um, I, I, I came up with the name. I got it approved by the Electoral Commission. And from what I can see, I spoke to Richard earlier on today, thousands. And the important thing isn't just people joining reform, but Tory activists are yeah, joining yeah, yeah. reform. Yeah, because they're furious. And that is what you need. They're yeah, furious yeah, and yeah, they feel yeah. completely let down by the Conservative government. They don't believe that Rishi Sunak should be prime minister. Uh, but look, Nigel, your show is going to be must watch tomorrow night with all of the fallout from what could be one hell of a red wave. But have have a couple of drinks tonight. It will be a fun one. Well, I will. And Dan and, and, and Dan, Carrie Lake has promised to be on the show tomorrow with me. So that oh, should be really brilliant. Good. Brilliant. That will be must watch because, as you say, she could be uh, a political superstar. Uh, emerging tonight. We will see Nigel Farage live from Arizona. Thank you so much.